The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... The worship on Sabbath is obviously of a superior nature, context, content, because God said so. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Everlasting Gospel video series. Today is really part two in a two-part series that uh, I felt strongly impressed to do on the subject of how to keep the Sabbath. Uh, last week we talked about laboring to rest. The sermon title this week is Holiday or Holy Day. And let's face it, there's a lot of people in the world that their concept of the Sabbath on the first day of the week is you put in your time at church and then you go to the football game or you go shopping or you just then treat it like a vacation. And I'm watching an evolution among Sabbath keepers towards that same concept that I think is unhealthy and unbiblical. God will honor those that honor Him. You know, there's a story about a man who had a banana plantation in South America a number of years ago, and he was a Sabbath keeper. And I don't remember all the circumstances because I'm repeating the story by memory, but evidently the, the fleet of ships, like banana boats, that come and pick up the bananas, uh, because of an approaching storm, they all arrived in this port city to pick up the cargo of bananas on Friday afternoon and it was unexpected and they all showed up at the same time and they said we are leaving Saturday night because there's a storm approaching and we cannot afford to get caught. Well all of the banana farmers they wait to the last minute to cut the bananas to make sure they're transported fresh. This is back before some of it was done by air and they all had to scramble Friday and Saturday to harvest their bananas and this one man quickly realized he would not be able to do that and keep the Sabbath. And so when some of his neighbors noticed that he did not have his workers out in the field harvesting the bananas, they said, aren't you going to do it? All the ships are leaving. It'll be the last uh, set of ships for the season because the, the shipping season for this crop is going to be over and you're going to lose your whole crop. He said, I can't do it without breaking the Sabbath. And so I figured this is God's problem and I'm not going to do it. And they labored with him. They said, what about your family? God understands. He'll understand. I mean, look at all the waste and you could give some to the church. And there was a scripture that uh, he quoted, has God as great a delight in sacrifices and offerings as in obeying the voice of the Lord to obey is better than sacrifice. So what if I give an offering to the church? God would rather have me obey. And they said, you're insane. And so they all went to work and they harvested their bananas and they brought them down to the ships and the ships all took off and as they were disappearing across the horizon, he was in church with his family and his bananas were still in the field. Well, the rest of the story is unbeknown to them, one of the ships had engine trouble and it limped into harbor that Monday wanting to buy some bananas. It, it got the repairs done. All the other bananas were sold because they thought that all the ships had left and they were now willing to pay nearly twice as much for anyone who had bananas so they would not go back empty. And so this man, because he honored God, God honored him and all of his friends watched as he then went down to the port and he sold his bananas for almost twice what he would have got if he had panicked. Those that honor me, I will honor. Now what is the purpose of the Sabbath? We talked about that a little bit in our last study. Of course, it's a time for reading the Word, for prayer. I hope you bring your Bibles to church. For corporate worship, I was shocked when I've seen some of these articles and statements that implicate that just stay in your place on the Sabbath. It's okay to just hang around the house. There are numerous commands in the Bible that it's a pl place and a time for us to come together to worship before Him, Isaiah 66. I even found a place in 2 Kings where it talks about the Shunite woman. And when her 
son died and she told her husband I'm going to see Elisha he said why it's not the Sabbath that implies that they came before they gathered together on the Sabbath day did you ever catch that and so there's an, a lot of evidence in the Bible that uh, it was a day for worship I, I remember I couldn't find some quotes in our last study one of them I'll share with you I had a whole litany of them fathers and mothers and this is from the book child guidance page 531 Fathers and mothers should make it a rule that their children attend public worship on the Sabbath and should enforce the rule by their own example. How many of you have heard of fathers that uh, Sunday morning they send the kids to church? They stay home so they can watch, re watch the uh, news and read the sports section in peace. Your children are going to do what you do, so we ought to do it by example. Of course, the Sabbath is a time for physical rest, spiritual rest, mental rest, It should start and end with worship. And that doesn't mean that we're scrambling around an hour after the Sabbath has begun and said, well, I guess we should have a little prayer. And I'll confess, the reason I'm sharing this with you is not uh, because I'm preaching down, but uh, I'm preaching up. In the bachelor home, we're still studying how to keep the Sabbath, and that's why this was important. Sometimes we found that the Sabbath started and and we said, well, let's, let's have a prayer, you know, and officially begin it. And instead of really worshiping and reading something with substance and singing together, and, and you know, it takes effort to give God the honor that is due His name. And it should end that way. There ought to be decisive beginnings and endings to the event. And we should guard the edges of the Sabbath. If you wait until you think that the clock has finally ticked its last tick and now you've entered holy time uh, why would you want to push it to the last minute and when it's over don't be watching the clock and say alright blow the horn it's over let's do our own thing that's the wrong attitude it's almost an insult to God let it linger a little bit start early and uh, show them that you care now the Sabbath is not one of the ten suggestions or the ten recommendations it is a commandment. Let's look at this again. It was in our scripture reading, but the repetition won't hurt us. Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11. And I especially want you to notice something that is all contained within this commandment. It's got the what, the where, the who, the how, the when, and the why in this one commandment. You know why God did all that for this one commandment? because he knew that we would have questions and so he gets more specific about this commandment than any other it's the longest it's in the middle of God's law he gave it a priority he begins with the word remember why do you think he did that he knew we would be prone to forget and that doesn't mean start remembering Friday afternoon remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy it is holy we are to keep it the way he's made it Six days it's telling us what to do. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, when? In the Sabbath, you shall not do any work. Who? You or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant, nor your cattle, nor the stranger who is within your gates. Where? Within your gates. For in six days, why? Why? For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and blessed them. And the Lord rested the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He's covering all that in this one commandment so that we would understand. Now in keeping with just reading the commandment, I would like to remind you that this is not one of the least of the commandments. You know, Jesus said, Whoever therefore shall do and teach the commandments, even the least of these commandments, will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And you'd be surprised how many people look at the Ten Commandments and they figure, well, if I was going to pick the least, it would be the Sabbath. But I think they have chosen poorly. You realize that the penalty for Sabbath breaking was death. The penalty for stealing was not death. The penalty for lying was not necessarily death. The penalty for adultery was death if the people were married. If they were unmarried, there was a penalty. You had to pay a dowry, and you married the gal or the guy. But the Sabbath, listen to this. Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. While the children of Israel 
were in the wilderness they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day and those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron we know it's a commandment here's a breaker what's the penalty we've got this new law we know what the law is now we don't know what the penalty is and they didn't know what to do you read on it says the Lord said to Moses the man must surely be put to death for gathering sticks all the congregation shall stone him with stones they were to participate in the execution so all the congregation brought him outside the camp and they stoned him with stones and he died I bet they were a little more careful next week how important is this to God is it a suggestion some people go to Romans where it says one man regards a day unto the Lord another man regards every day alike let everyone be persuaded in their own mind and they applied that statement that is dealing with the Jewish holidays the yearly Sabbath to the Sabbath day oh no it's talking about something different there then you could read on let me give you just a couple more verses if I have time Ezekiel 20 verse 12 and 13 moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them it's a sign of sanctification do we need that do we need sanctification yet the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness they did not walk in my statutes they despised my judgments which if a man does he will live by them meaning there's sanctifying influence in them and they greatly defiled my Sabbaths then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness and consume them because they despised my judgments and did not walk in my statutes but profaned my Sabbath that's pretty serious you can read all also in, in Ezekiel 20 verse 21 and 20 verse 24 hollow my Sabbaths there'll be a sign between me and you that you might know that I'm the Lord notwithstanding the children of Israel rebelled against me they did not walk in my statutes were not careful to observe my judgments which if a man does he'll live by them this is similar but they profaned my Sabbath then I said I would pour out my fury on them I would fulfill my anger against them in the wilderness because they profaned my Sabbaths does God care is it serious I think sometimes we feel like you know just everybody be led by your own conscience and if it feels good it's okay the Bible doesn't teach that God is specific about keeping the Sabbath day that it is a law it is a commandment amen now there are a couple of extremes and this is what I think pollutes our thinking a little bit by the time Jesus came the Sabbath was being taught by the Pharisees who were extremely legalistic and they even accused Jesus of Sabbath breaking in the Bible but nowhere in the Bible do you see Jesus ever doing anything that violates the Sabbath command the way it's given in Scripture he broke their man-made traditions and how often did you hear Jesus say you have a fine way of setting aside the commandment of God that you might observe the traditions of men that's why he goes on and he says in vain do they worship me Sabbath and worship are connected teaching for doctrines the commandments of men they had man-made commandments they taught as though it was a doctrine and it was all vain you never see Jesus in the carpenter shop on the Sabbath day you never hear him or teaching his disciples it's okay to break the Sabbath day indeed he was in the synagogue every Sabbath day so by his example he was there worshiping stood up reading the scriptures out loud and that's a good example for us so a lot of the conflict that you see in the New Testament was Christ trying to clean and clear the Sabbath from the man-made restrictions and there are still Pharisees out there amen that try to make it a burden instead of a blessing it is supposed to be a blessing but some people believe that uh, those statements in Isaiah where it says thine own pleasure means that we're supposed to make ourselves as miserable as possible in order to keep the Sabbath let me read that to you Isaiah 58 verse 13 and 14 if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath from doing your pleasure on the Jews holy day is that what it says from your holy day God says my holy day so we can't pick our own holy day it's his holy day from doing your own pleasure now the word pleasure there doesn't mean anything you enjoy it means your personal selfish pursuits and you know there are some people say you know let's see as long as we're out in nature we're gonna go water skiing we're gonna go snow skiing on Sabbath and that would I I believe that that's uh, a corruption of what the intent is uh, while the Lord wants you to enjoy the Sabbath you're not out to be doing your own diversions I believe that it's a time to dedicate to his service and we'll get into that a little more and he goes on to say honor him 
not doing your own ways or finding your own pleasure. And that word pleasure there means purposes, pursuits, ways. How many of you eat on the Sabbath? Show of hands. Be honest. How many of you enjoy it? Would any of you dare to say you find pleasure in it? So we're not supposed to eat on the Sabbath? Of course, that's not what he's saying. He's not saying you're smart. As soon as you start to enjoy something, I must not be doing the right thing because I'm enjoying this. And there are people who take that to mean it. It means your own pursuits, your own ways, your own purposes. Now, in keeping with that, and I need to be very delicate in the way I address this, I get a question much more than you would imagine on the subject of how does that relate to husbands and wives with the marital intimacy on the Sabbath day? There's a lot of confusion in this area. Let me get you to think about something. What day of the week did God make Adam and Eve? Friday, sixth day. And what was the last thing he says to them before you enter into the seventh day? Be fruitful and multiply. What would their honeymoon have been? Is there anything in the Bible? Now, was there sin in the world when God made Adam and Eve? There is no sin in the world. Is there anything in the scriptures in paradise that implicates there's something impure or unholy about those natural relations? No, and I would like to give you uh, Hebrews 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable, and that word honorable can be translated pure among all, and the bed undefiled, pure. And so this concept that, well, the Sabbath's a holy day, and so... Uh, you can't support that biblically. Paul does say there may be times that a family or husband and wife wants to choose to fast and pray and separate from one another for the purpose of fasting and praying. You notice it's equated with not eating too. And so if it's okay to eat on the Sabbath, do I need to go much further with this or do you understand? Now what I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing by permission and not by commandment. If your conscience tells you otherwise or if you and your spouse have made a covenant then hey there's no, no sin in that that's fine but I just wanted to say biblically uh, I think we need to be balanced about this one of the most important parts of the Sabbath commandment is summed up in the word remember and as I said earlier remembering does not mean you wait until the sun is cresting the horizon Friday afternoon and you say well it's almost Sabbath I, I need to get get ready because we live to worship God and keep in mind I believe we should worship God seven days a week amen but let's face it the worship on Sabbath is obviously of a superior nature context content because God said so he said he will meet with us and bless us in a special way because we live for the purpose of worshiping him and glorifying him it is worthy of investing time in thinking ahead and remembering. We don't just start remembering the Sabbath on Friday. I think you start remembering it when the sun goes down Saturday evening and thinking about your next Sabbath and plan our week. You know, the Sabbath is a wonderful calibration tool of the Lord in the life of those that worship Him because life is made of time and if every week our weeks revolve around this blessed time with God you never lose focus and that's intended that, I think God planned it that way so that the Sabbath is something that our whole life revolves around and it helps us to keep the focus on what our purpose is to worship Him, to serve Him, to glorify Him it also helps us guard against becoming preoccupied with the cares of this life lest that day overtake us as a thief. And so it's worthy of some attention in planning, buying and selling. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31, if the peoples of the land brought wares or any grain to sell on the Sabbath day that we should not buy it from them on the Sabbath day. Why do you think that is? And there are people who will argue, well Doug, you know we take up an offering so we're handling money so what's the difference if you go to a restaurant? That's a whole different thing. Giving an offering to God is different from buying something, engaging people in trade, and hiring somebody. The Bible tells us it's a day where we are to rest and we are to let servants rest. And so when we go somewhere and we're paying somebody to cook our food because we haven't made preparation, um, 
I don't think that's a good thing for Christians. This was radar. I just wondered if I was going to get any support on that. You're not supposed to buy and sell. You should prepare in advance. I don't believe we should be going out to eat on the Sabbath day and, and mingling with the world in that way. Sometimes, let's face it, the environments in these public places of eating, they're playing worldly music, worldly conversation, and I, I just don't know that that's God's plan for us to expose ourselves that way. Matthew chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, Jesus said to them, What man is there among you that has a sheep if he falls in the pit on the Sabbath day will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. And obviously there are people who work in hospitals and things. There are folks that are sick and they need care. And uh, I think I was teasing Mrs. Bachelor when one of the little bachelors was born that she better not be laboring on Sabbath day when she was pregnant because we had a command for that. I don't know that she did pay attention. But uh, obviously, huh? Oh, good. All right, then you were paying attention. I forgot. But, you know, there's a few Sabbaths where she looked pretty close. And it tells us that, of course, we're to take care of these obviously, these natural things. Even Jesus talked about on the eighth day, they would even circumcise a baby. Let's face it, in church, uh, sometimes pastors stay pretty busy. And that's why that scripture says the priests profane the Sabbath that means that they do things that are technically not right and yet they're blameless. On the Sabbath day, the priests would keep the altar fire burning. They're hauling wood. They would keep water in the labor. They're hauling water. If the people outside the sanctuary were doing it, they were stoned. So there were things that were done in the sanctuary for the service of the people that God recognized needed to be done. So you've got to you know, understand what is the context of what is being done. What am I supposed to wear on the Sabbath? Everyone listen now with your eyes closed so you don't look at anyone around you. I do think it's something we should address in how to keep the Sabbath. I believe when we come into the presence of God, we should be conscious that He's a holy God and wear what our best is. Don't save your worst for God. Uh, some people come to church, I know they go to work all week long, they wear a suit they wear respectful clothing. They come to church looking like they're on a Hawaiian vacation. And if the best you have is your Hawaii clothes, then that praise the Lord. When in Hawaii, it's okay. I've been there. Uh, I said, no, I'm serious. I go to church in some South Pacific islands, and everybody has short sleeves. And it's the way that they, it's their respectful clothing. You go to the Philippines, they wear the barong. You know what I'm saying? And wear what the respectful clothing is. Because you're coming into God's presence, you want to, by your example, show respect. Let me give you some scriptures. Genesis 35, verse 2 and 3. Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves. Change your clothes. Let us arise and go to Bethel. Who knows what the word Bethel means? House of God. And I will make an altar there to God they were to change their clothes as they went before the Lord. When the Lord was about to give the Ten Commandments, Moses commanded them to wash their clothes. So one thing is we want to be clean, we should be neat, and we should be respectful when we come before the Lord. Now finally, the Sabbath is a time to be with Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42 it happened as they went and entered a certain village that a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Martha was distracted by much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care? My sister has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part that will not be taken away from her. Sitting at Jesus' feet, gazing into his face, spending time with him, hearing his voice. This is what the Sabbath is for. Quality time with Jesus. He wants that with us. And he was not going to let, even though Martha was preparing a dinner for Jesus, he said, no, I'm not going to interrupt this. This is more important. We're having a relationship. We're getting to know each other. And he wants to have that with you. Stay tuned. Pastor Doug will be right back with this week's special free offer. Hello, friends. The program you're watching is the culmination of a dream and a mission. Let me tell you about the mission. 
Amazing Facts believe strongly in the great commission given by Christ in Matthew chapter 28 to share the wonderful news of salvation with the entire world. There are billions of people on this planet that are in desperate need of a change in their lives. We believe that a spiritual encounter with God is the only way to affect real change. Now let me tell you about the dream. Amazing Facts started in 1966 after the founder of this ministry, Joe Cruz, decided to take the mission of sharing God's Word with everyone personally. Since then, we have shared this wonderful message about God with millions around the world through our free Bible school, free Bible study guides, our television, radio, and internet ministries. During Pastor Doug Batchelor's 10-day health and gospel mission trip to Southeast India, we witnessed over 15,000 individuals surrender their lives over to Christ. We are currently building 70 churches in that region. If you've been blessed by this program and would like to join with us in this mission of taking the gospel to the world, why not call to become a partner in evangelism? Our partners have decided to consistently contribute to our efforts in sharing this message that has changed not only my life, but the lives of countless others. If you'd like to join our partners, share a testimony or contribute a gift, contact us today. Friends, the most amazing fact of all is that God loves us and cares for us and that He has a plan for your life. Prayerfully consider joining our efforts. Until next time, may God continue to hold you in the palm of His hand. Does the church sometimes misunderstand the state of man in death today? When we lose a loved one, especially something that happens unexpectedly, sometimes there's a temptation to be angry with God and say, Why, Lord, did you let this happen? Hi friends, I expect that some of you might find it shocking that most modern churches have totally discarded or distorted the fourth commandment and they've replaced it with man-made traditions. But this just underscores the importance of knowing the rest of the story regarding God's holy day of rest. We'd love to send you a free gift that will help you in your studies. It's a study guide entitled, The Lost Day of History. And I think you'll be amazed as you dig deeper into the word Please call the toll-free number on your screen and ask for offer number 113. Or if you prefer, you can simply write to us at Amazing Facts, offer number 113, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Until we meet again, remember the encouraging promise of Jesus. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer. There is no cost or obligation. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request. The preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated.